Hi, this is Peg from Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am a junk journal decorator or a jewelry fabricator turned into a junk journal creator. So I hope you will join me on my journey. Thank you very much for landing on my channel. And today what I'd like to share with you is how I created this toilet paper roll quarantine journal. I made this as a gift for a neighbor that was quarantined due to the virus and was quarantined for 14 days. So I thought it would be fun or not necessarily fun to be quarantined, but it would be advantageous to journal that time to have it in years to come to go back and remember 2020 and what an odd year it has been. There's a couple of things that I want to mention about toilet paper rolls. They are not the same. So each brand has a slightly different size, slightly different width. I try to keep all of mine together now that I have figured that out. So I squish them down, use my bone folder to try to make a really solid seam, and then I uh, coordinate them by size. You can see that I have two stacks here in binder clips, and I have seven in each stack. For some reason, I'm looking for that eighth piece. So I just have uh, picked up a couple of toilet paper rolls and I'm trying to determine if I have eight of the same size. And just to illustrate the fact that toilet paper rolls are not the same, you can see this one was the same height, but it wasn't the same width. So I'm gonna toss it to the side, use it in another project, use it for something else, and binder clip those back together and toss them to the side and we'll use this stack right here. So I have eight very similar size toilet paper rolls that I am going to utilize for this journal. The reason that I'm using eight is I'm going to put two tags or two journaling cards in seven of them and use the front one as a cover or as an opportunity to put a gift card or a here's what I'm giving you, here's what it is, here's how to use it, directions if you will. So now that I have established that, let's take a look at these toilet paper rolls and determine what we need to do. Of course, to create the book, I need to create a tag to go down inside each pocket that this toilet paper roll is going to create. So I'm measuring to know what size to cut the tag. So I have, um, width and height, two inches by four inches. So now I know once I get ready to cut, I know what size I need to cut, slightly less than two inches by four inches. And as you can see there, I had some uh, tags that I had cut that I decided not to use. I cut those out of a white cardstock and I went back and cut them out of a craft paper start cardstock and said I did that off camera you don't need to watch me cut two inch slightly less than two inch and slightly less than four inch cards so now I'm going to apply a coat of gesso to the toilet paper rolls the reason that I'm utilizing the gesso is it provides a good substrate to um, collect the paint so the paint is not going to uh, give you the outcome that you're looking for just on the toilet paper roll. I make my own gesso. I will link that here. Um, you can see that it's a little bit lumpy because of the plaster paris I use. So I do sand down every time I use my own gesso. But I like the I like the outcome. I like the way it works, and it takes a second to sand it. So now that I have everything gessoed, painted. Uh, sanded, I'm ready to punch the hole in the upper left hand corner because I have decided to put these together with a uh, silver ring that opens and closes. So the first hole I punched and now each time I punch a second hole or third hole or fourth hole you can see I'm just using that first one as a template so that they're all they all will line up. Pull the jelly plate out to utilize to paint. And you can see that my jelly paint plate is kind of 
30 has a lot of dried paint on it and I have linked a video as well on a great way that I found to clean all that dried paint off of your jelly plate. So if you have the same issue as I do, watch that video. It'll give you a quick tip on how to, to clean those bad boys up. I'm using burnt umber and yellow ochre, um, or burnt sienna, I think is what the paint is called. It's an Arteza paint. I really like these paints and I've enjoyed using them. I am just sticking them on the jelly plate with my brayer. The toilet paper roll itself has quite a bit of texture to it and I am curious to see what the texture of the jelly plate combined with the texture of the toilet paper roll is going to do. I'm pretty happy with that. I like the way that looks. On my second um, swipe here, I'm going to run that brayer over the back of that toilet paper roll because I think that will give it just a little more paint than I can get by just pressure from my hand. So I'm going to stick that brayer and see what happens. Yes, more paint. So I like it. We're going to use a brayer on the subsequent pieces. I'm going to let the front dry, turn it over, and do the back as well. Just, you know, move it around on your jelly plate until you you get it looking the way you want it. And you don't have to use the jelly plate. You can just um, paint your your toilet paper rolls any any color you, you want. This is just what I happen to use. Again, I'm here for ideas, not mandates. Okay, and on and on we'll go with with each uh, toilet paper roll, and here are the completed eight. So the um, jelly plate has created a pretty interesting texture, but I want to pull a few stencils in, and I have the uh, Distress Oxide Sprays that I think I'm just going to kind of lay over the top of them. So I'm using this circular um, stencil and spraying on a yellow, saffron yellow, I think is, is the color of the Distress Oxide. And then I also have pulled out uh, Carved Pumpkin and Tattered Rose. So I'm gonna use a few different, I think I chose three different stencils and just doing this front and back to add a, a little more interest to the individual pockets. And once this paint is dry, I'm going to go back and I don't video this, but we're creating a pocket. So on the side opposite the hole that we've punched in the upper left corner on that bottom, what would, would be the bottom, we're going to put a fine bead of Fabri-Tec glue or whatever glue you choose to use, clamp it together and let it dry to create that pocket. So the pocket has a defined bottom. And now that I've done the gluing I'm, and let it dry, I'm going to go back and I decided to add charms on the bottom of the book. So I am just punching holes along the bottom of the pockets. And I'm going left, center, right, so those charms will not all fall in one spot. Now the tags. So I've cut the craft cardstock, craft color, brown paper color cardstock into sizes slightly smaller than my toilet paper dimensions, just to make sure that from um, that they'll fit down inside that pocket that we've created without it, um, bumping up against that little hole and the ring that we have put into the side. So you want to make sure that you make them smaller so you have a leeway to get by that ring that you're utilizing to keep it together. And as you can see there, I had a little template used where I'd cut off the edges of a 
uh, hotel key card just to uh, use to make my tags uniform. And now I am have just eyeballed the center hole and I'm going to punch that and then I'm going to use that first card that I punched as my template for all the subsequent cards. And that completes that. I don't think you need to watch every little hole being punched. So let's move on to um, just distressing the outside. And I have um, pulled in, I'm using both weathered wood and vintage photo. And I kind of like the weathered wood. It's a little darker than the uh, vintage photo. So I'm going to use that to put my numbers on as well. So I'm just going around the outside edge and distressing the tag. And just checking it to make sure that it's going to fit down inside that pocket. I've cut all the tags the same size and each toilet paper roll is, is pretty much the same size. There is a, a little bit of variance just out of What, what the product is. And now I'm going to cut seven inches of jute and utilize that as my tag pull. Tie a square knot through that hole. And I chose to do a square knot because I don't want to do anything that's going to put a lot of uh, stress on that paper. So I'm just right over left, left over right. And once I get that knot secure, I am going to twist the jute and unbind um, the strands. That jute is three strands. And if you just uh, twist it counterclockwise, you can pull those apart. And it just looks a lot better than that uh, I don't even know what to call it than, than just the, the jute as is. And there you go. So now we have the jute and each tag. We have the tags all distressed. And I'm going to number them. 1 through 14. Utilizing this uh, vintage number set that I um, have had for a while. I believe I purchased that off of Amazon. It was really nice set. It came in, in this tin and uh, came with a little ink pad, black ink pad with it as well. So I'm just going to uh, test it. Again, I, I'm using the weathered wood and just checking that color, make sure I'm okay with it. And going to pull out one of the numbers and make sure that I'm happy with that. And I am, I'm happy with that. So let's, let's go ahead and, and stamp those tags front and back. So the, the purpose of this is tag one would be a journal entry about quarantine day one. Uh, tag two would be a journal entry about quarantine day two. And I just thought this would make a kind of a, a nice memory in years to come of this crazy year, 2020. So it's, you know, just something to go back and look at. And now I've decided to run those toilet paper rolls through my Big Shot. And the reason I'm doing this, I've done it on other projects that I've had. I like the way that compresses all of those fibers. It gives it a um, more substantial feel. It doesn't look quite like a toilet paper roll when, when you complete this. And it is 
uh, the sound that it makes when it hits the table, uh, it just sounds very substantial. So I rolled each of those through. I used the gear folder and I rolled all eight through and you do have to go back and reopen them up because it does compress all the fibers so you have to um, reopen the pocket so your tags will fit down in there which is simple to do and now I'm going to adhere the bling to the bottom I have little charms that I've pulled off of junk jewelry that I've picked up at thrift stores um, just little charms that I've picked up at craft stores things I've collected over the years that I have in a coffee can <laughs> sitting in my um, shop so I'm just placing those so they are um, not all in line at the bottom but there's charms all the way across the bottom of this booklet now that it's complete and there you have it see how they dangle and this is the completed booklet page one is a, a note card um, to let the recipient know what this is for and then you have all of the days to journal for the total 14. So I, in hope, I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope that you will be inspired to use this. You may not use it for a quarantine journal. You may use it for, for something else. But in any event, this is what the finished piece looks like. It um, was an afternoon project, easy to put together. So thank you for joining me. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I am trying to put content up weekly. So if you will join me in my journal, I am also linking, not in my journal, but in my journey, I am also linking a couple of videos uh, that I talked about below the gesso recipe and how to clean your jelly plate will be linked in the comments below. So once again, thank you. Please subscribe. Please share and like and let me hear your comments.